Hello listeners, you are now listening to part two of our Black Adam special. So in part one, we looked at an in-depth review of the movie Black Adam, while in part two, we get into our deep dive of DC moving forward. So hope you enjoy. For people that are new to season two, we're about to get into our deep dive. So that's usually a discussion that goes outside of the movie into just like a even different topic and subjects and bigger focus. So with the past two weeks, we've kind of done just an analysis, breaking down different horror movies and then even the slasher genre. But for our deep dive here, we're going to get into DC moving forward. All right, so coming back from that, we're going to see the main question that a lot of people were asking going into to this movie, uh, coming out of it, did The Rock save DC? Mm. Oh, man. Well, this is actually kind of a, a fascinating question because, like, for me, I don't think he solely, solely uh, saved DC. Like, the character of Black Adam, like, the Black, like, him embodying Black Adam, like, that was just a great first step in this uh in this new like i guess wave of dc films do i think like he saved all of it i don't know i don't know like the ways in which you can like help help like make the movies better you know like uh recasting ezra ezra miller um and and just different other types of things that are around like dc movies nowadays but like in terms of like but he did set a president and he did like set like a good groundwork like a good foundation for them to build upon and build off of if you know what i mean right for me again like i pose the question knowing it's an unfair question because i don't think it's like whether there are other dc movies currently coming out and it wasn't like that are already scheduled already like coming out down the pike we have uh shazam 2 which was supposed to come out in december uh but got pushed back uh the Flash movies coming out, Aquaman 2's coming out. I believe there was something else in the pipe, uh, but just going from there, like, it wasn't like this was the last DC movie to come out before nothing else. And so, but I would say he definitely helped it. Uh, just with perception wise, I believe like the reviews are gonna go up just from the fan perspective, because again, not a bad movie at all, uh, just from an action movie. So I believe that's gonna go up. And just even perception, like he definitely left us wanting more. We're going to get into what we want to see next uh, towards the end of the deep dive. But he definitely just like gave great characters. The movie itself, the JSA, like I said, I want to see another Hawkman uh, <laughs> appearance at some point. Uh, also, uh, just like another Dr. Fate uh, reincarnation or something like that. So just with that, he definitely gave it a boost that it needed, in my opinion. But you kind of touched on it just with that. But does it need? Does DC itself need a hard reboot or a slight reset? Mm. All right. So yeah, as I, I, I might have touched on it a bit, but like I really think like it just needs like just slight reset. Like it, as I say, like with like there are aspects of like that DC EU that were good, and that there were some aspects of it that uh. Not so much, um, but but like when it comes to like certain actors and characters, I feel like, hey, it would do a slight disservice if they weren't to come back. Like, for example, Henry Cavill, uh, mm -hmm. like he he was a great Superman, uh, given like with the script that he was given, as well as, you know, like Jason Momoa as Aquaman. I thought he was a great character. Uh, yep. Black Adam. Great. Shazam. Great. Wonder Woman, Gal Gadot. Mm. It, it's kind of problematic, but uh, but yeah. So like, with when it comes to like the movies, like really, it's just like you really just they just need like, oh yeah, and the Suicide Squad, like the new Suicide Squad movie was was phenomenal. Um, it was phenomenal. So like, hey, you you guys have the blueprints. You guys have shown like there is success. You just need like some direction and knowing like how to go about it. That's my thing. Yeah, I like how you touched on that. I believe it also needs a slight reset. 
Um, we're going to put the merger slash their in debt monies part aside just for a second. But I believe that DC has a horrendous PR problem. And that's the reason that a lot of perception about their movies is worse than what the movie actually is. Because for me personally, I'm trying to like separate which movies. I'm not going to count Green Lantern as a DCEU movie. Nice. Um, And so just kind of going from there, um, I don't believe they actually made a bad movie, in my opinion, because... So let's go Batman versus Superman. Batman versus Superman was one of the most hyped movies pre pre Black Panther, pre Black Panther Wakanda Forever, and pre uh, Endgame slash Infinity War. Yep. Also, No Way Home. One of the most hyped movies of all time. Did absolute box office numbers. So just with that, the perception of Man of Steel, people were kind of like. What's with the Superman? So that was, they were battling that, which fed into it. There were some issues with the theater cut of Batman versus Superman in terms of certain things weren't explained. And then when I saw like the actual full cut of the movie, I was like, okay, it makes a bit more sense now. But, and just like even the trailer, like people really hated the Doomsday reveal in the trailer. But going from there, I thought it was like, okay, a decent movie. But uh, then like critics got to it um certain fan things and then dc panicked and that cost the suicide squad the first suicide squad movie in terms of a lot of edits a lot of recuts they apparently changed the entire tone of the movie they promised the joker in this movie which was really hyped from jared leto and then we got to the movie very little jared leto and he was joker was basically a lovesick puppy but that was reviewed as one of the worst movies of all time and I went to a friend, I was with a friend and we like heard that it was like terribly reviewed. And we went to the theaters, we were scared. We were like, what are we about to watch? This is about to be garbage of a movie. We walked in and then like, as soon as the movie ended, we turned to each other and it's like, that wasn't that bad. Like we actually enjoyed it. Like, and a lot of people in the theater enjoyed it, but again, perception. Uh, so that affected it because Batman vs. Superman DC panicked because they wanted to do their own Avengers after like two movies of setup when Avengers had like 10 years of setup. And then so going from there, I think Wonder Woman did decent, but you know, other issues that people, you know, the whole sexist, yada, yada, yada thing that we're not going to touch now. Uh, so that's another perception. And then people don't really start getting back onto the bandwagon until like, I would say Aquaman. Is that safe to say? And then we go Mm -hmm. to the first Justice League movie, which came out on my birthday, saw it with a friend. I I enjoyed it for what it was, but then we had the whole Joss Whedon incident. (laughs) Uh, Again, terrible PR. And you know, Zack Snyder, he had like a family issue. So that aside, uh, definitely respect for that. And then the whole Snyder Cut thing. But once we get post Justice League, a lot of the DC movies are bangers. Like, I'm not even going to lie about it. A lot of the DC movies are bangers, if we're being honest. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Aquaman, banger. Suicide Squad, banger. You had a... Uh, well, I mean, technically isn't DC, but whatever. Isn't, but, but it, banger. It's DC. Uh, yeah. Eh, Birds of Prey. Mm, mm. I mean, I like, it's like the equivalent of Black Widow, which, again, I think Black Widow gets worse reviews than it actually deserves. Yeah, I like Black Widow and... And, I mean, not Black Widow, but Birds of Prey, and eh. but but then they get right back and boy, it says Shazam, banger, uh, and then we get the Snyder Cut, the Justice League, which fan dream, like like the internet's dream finally came true, everybody's dream finally came true, mm-hmm. and then we finally got like a version of the Justice League movie that like people could actually rally behind, and it was just like. Thank the Lord. How they had a cyber cyborg in the in that movie compared to the first movie made me not ever want to see a Josh Whedon movie again. That was a crime what he did the cyborg. I mean that and a, a multitude of things that Josh Whedon did. Actual crimes. <laughs> yeah. but, but we we ain't gonna talk about Josh Whedon and uh and yeah it's like that movie was up and I loved like how he characterized Batman even more like 
like at least in that version of the movie because he wasn't a total joke yeah. <laughs> he was in justice league well in joss whedon in the whedon cut <laughs> but but yeah as i said like each movie subsequently were bangers and like it's just it's like they they approved that they can do it it's yes. just a matter of like hey getting some good direction and like and like trying to like take like hey why did all these work and run with it mm-hmm. so just in this do you think it's marvel biased speaking in a lot of cases like that because marvel has trained us for the past uh since 2008 so 14 15 years of how to watch a superhero movie a lot of like early 2000 what well, late 90s early 2000 movies were the definition of hit or miss the fantastic four movies are like hit and miss not the the last one that was a miss that was century. a miss fire literally the x-men movies are like either they're great or they're like what is going on right now yeah the definition of that uh spider-man movies first two incredible third one i watched it when i was younger i haven't watched it as an older person but that's a cult classic but i do recognize it is not one of the best superhero movies of all time uh even you know the daredevil movie people don't like that um What's the one? Ghost Rider. The first, first, first one was decent. Second one, people absolutely hate. Fell um, off a cliff. Yes. So just going from there, like people, uh, we've been trained like the first uh, fourteen, like last 14, 15 years on how to watch a Marvel movie. Then we get to DC again, who immediately tried to jump to an, their own Avengers with the Justice League, and saw how that like kind of felt. So, mm-hmm. what do you think about that? And that's actually a fun topic, but I think like with that, it's more, it's partially Marvel bias, and it's also part superhero fatigue. So, yeah. so like how I get it is that like okay, the first mar- first part, the Marvel bias, like yeah, Marvel dominated the the movie scene, like and and DC and like Warner Bros were since they have the license to DC movies and like, hey, a lot of these heroes came before Marvel and yet Marvel is cooking us right now. Mm-hmm. And argu- and we got like arguably some of the most iconic heroes of all time. In Definitely. fact, I would argue say like they do have the most iconic heroes of all time. I mean, the Trinity. Once you get past Spider-Man with Marvel, it's literally just like it's a debate about who's number two. Yeah, it's like Spider-Man, pretty much the face of like. It actually yeah. reminds me of this like great thing that I saw earlier. It was like, okay, the face of Marvel is Spider-Man. The face of DC is Batman, but like the face of superheroes overall is Superman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like they have like those licenses, and they were just like, hey, we need to capitalize and capitalize, which that kind of thing was was the misstep. Like it, they were they were just thinking about money at the time without thinking about and seeing the profits that the Avengers have without realizing all this, like the four years of setup that they had in between Iron Man in 2008 and Avengers in 2012. Like yeah. that was four years of setup and they decided to cram those four years into like what, two Essentially, they essentially tried to make uh, Man of Steel the jump off for their entire universe, yeah. which it wasn't designed as. No, it was not. Uh, it, as a matter of fact, I think like it was it was more designed to be like closer to be, you know, like the Dark Knight and and try to be like try to start a universe with that. And then they said, mm-hmm. hey, you know what? Hey, let's do our own Batman. And then uh, that's when misfires started happening Uh, well, continue to happen. And so, yeah, so like that's with that aspect is just like them wanting to like steamroll ahead and try to do that. So it's kind of like, OK, Marvel's already like so far ahead in the like story department and yep. DC is trying its best to catch up to that specific point. But doing it so quickly with so much dense story that the MCU has and doing it in a short amount of time, like people going to uh, have a problem with that. Right. And then the second part why I said superhero uh, fatigue is like, hey, every year we got like at least two superhero movies. Yeah. It's like every year is at least two movies. And nowadays, like two movies, two shows and like a a million different spinoffs. And that's just from Marvel. Like, 
maybe three shows, honestly, be honest with you. I was like, two, maybe three. And that's just the Marvel size. Like, cause and DC is like try again, trying to like do the same thing so that you're adding more content on top of that. And I yeah. think like people like people getting tired. Like that's a lot of money to spend on either A going into movies, B renting the movies, mm-hmm. or C having your streaming service. Yeah. And I'm just like, like, I get it. I get it. It's like at a certain points, like eventually I'm thinking like what's gonna happen is like eventually superheroes are going to like reach like a low point in terms of like sales and returns. And it's gonna be a sad day when that happens because like yeah, yeah. you kind of milked that horse and I mean milked that cow until it till we started draining blood. Yeah, I think you made an excellent point with uh, with just like superhero fatigue. Like I was going to get it, like we kind of touched on the bad creative slash movies and then direction kind of situation. So just like getting into uh, superhero fatigue. Marvel definitely is has given me superhero fatigue because uh, just going from Moon Knight to then uh, Miss Marvel and then really with uh, she all I was just like, man, I cannot keep watching all these shows. Like, because like you're trying to catch something. That's what I meant. Like how they trained us where it's like, okay, so we have our superhero, but over the course of that, we have to connect this movie to previous movies. And then we also have to connect this, uh, this movie slash TV. show to the futures of what's next. So that's how mm-hmm. we get you uh, in the cycle. And just even with that, where it's just like, oh man, I'm tired of this. <laughs> so like then DC um, kind of, I actually don't get a lot of fatigue from DC movies slash shows recently because like even we talked about uh, Justice, not Justice League, the Suicide Squad, but even with a Peacemaker where it's so funny and just like off the beaten path where it's like, this seems like it can stand alone on itself, which I really liked. Um, and even the Batman itself just being a banger of a movie where people were legitimately like, is this better than Dark Knight? At least conversations of it. But um, just from that perspective, definitely they have us until uh, I would say Secret Wars, but that even that got pushed back like another year just mm-hmm. because of different stuff. So now 2026, like really, like I have to watch movies and t- like we're going to watch it because we love it. That's one thing, but you're right about that. And we're definitely seeing it in phase four with just like uh, the returns on the movies. But sticking with DC, what I really, do you think they need a 10 year plan? 10 years, I would say is probably, mm, I would say like, that's probably doing a bit too much. Cause as I was mentioning, like the superhero fatigue is starting to, is starting to kick in. And it, it kind of is kicking in. So like how and also like you you got to like start building stuff up. I say like in pieces. So like I just saw like phase one, phase two, phase three right. of Marvel. Right. Like those may have been like you may think like, OK, that's like a 10 year plan. And that's like all it is. But if you look at like the history of like the development of those plans, like things changed like dramatically from like what they intended on doing versus <laughs> what e- eventually came out Think like about spider-man yeah it's like well spider-man coming into the mcu that was a huge shift that oh, yeah. made everything go like okay here we go uh but like there were like certain shifts like for example the black widow movie was supposed to come out way earlier <laughs> or how uh i believe the captain marvel movie was to come out way earlier and i think like civil war was supposed to come out later and just stuff like that it's like switching around dates and whatnot i think and like this was like just within one tier like one phase so i think like what they really need to focus on is like focus on one phase at a time like maybe a good three four years and just really focus on that solidify it and then see the returns that you're getting on that. And then if you if you see like, hey, we we are going in, then you can start focusing. All right, phase two. What are we going to go from there? And that's kind of like how I see it. I like that. Yeah. I mean, even like the head of DC Creative literally just left the company. 
So yeah. it's just like, again, it's to the PR perspective, like you can't predict these things, um, especially since they literally are going through a merger. They just canceled the Batgirl movie. Uh, they canceled uh, Zatanna. That's how you say it, right? Yeah. So like a lot of things already that were down the pike are getting canceled. So it's like, it doesn't even make sense to do that. So again, I, I what we kind of touched on a lot is like, we're speaking to the importance of a director, executive producer, actor, um, with a vision and a passion, a passion for a movie versus making a movie for the sake of making a movie. Mm-hmm. And how we see in the later DC movies, the better product because we see the passion in a Snyder cut. We see the uh, Peacemaker where James Gunn is just like, they handed him the pen and said, go for it. And then even with Black Adam where it took this, uh, him like over 10 years to get this movie made and it definitely paid off in the end. So if you even want to speak to it even more. Uh, yeah, I think like at the end of the day, like sometimes like, like when you have like a passion for something, you're go- like the audience is te- generally either a they're going to like receive it a lot better and they definitely going to see it like in the work uh like because of fact you're pushing more effort into it and not just making it out of i like obligation like for example going back into the horror uh roots the the hellraiser franchise <sighs> and how like they they literally have to make a movie every like few years otherwise they lose the license and and that's why you got like movies four through not no like five through nine which are which mm, 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 i don't i don't want to talk about those actually no 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 it's five through ten that's trash oh, i forgot about the tenth movie oh my goodness that's how you know it's terrible that's how you know it's terrible <laughs> children that i literally blotted one of the movies out of my psyche uh, but but yeah so like yeah there's something like that or versus as you mentioned the snyder cut which which was so much of a passion project that that even fans or like other people want it like all the actors all of like the pr they they pressed warner bros to get that movie made and and it worked out like so i said there it's like who what where else can you say like there are literally two cuts of the same movie besides the superman 2 uh movie uh where you can say like there are two different versions of us of the same movie and but one is like considered so much better so much superior than the other one without it being an extended cut absolutely different yeah exactly like complete two different directors taking on pretty much the same script but done two different ways so so yeah it's like that that speaks tremendously to the to the power of passion like you can have like passion like Zack Snyder or not so much with uh Joss Whedon and and with that like like I think like hey if we just keep going when it comes to passion that's how you get great movies I mean that's where the Silent Hill movie came from and it even goes back to our conversation either last week or two weeks ago uh, where you said um, one of the directors for, I don't remember the specific horror movie, but they were like, hey, are you scared or something? And the director said, no. And they said, no, you can't do this movie. Oh, that was need- the Resident Evil game. Yeah. So there was like, we need you to be scared of something because if you're not, how are other people going to be scared of something? So it's kind of just like even that passion where you connect as a creator. So if we go deeper, I'm the executive of DC and I'm calling you to... Uh, Take control. See if and what your vision is. So let's see how that goes. Hello. Hello. Is this uh, Mr. The Canyon Black? It is. I am him. So this is uh, I'm from I'm the Fallen Shinigami from D.C. And we mm. are looking at a new head of creative. Mm, mm, fun, fun, fun. And I, I see and all all of life's creation, everything you do, it all comes back to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, you've seen recently we've had a lot of PR, just uh, nightmares, uh, just no direction at the moment. We need a plan. What's your vision before we can hire you? Like, 
what 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 do you what do you see for DC? Oh man, and in, in order for DC to thrive right now, uh, you you gotta you gotta clean house a little bit. Uh, you know, you gotta gotta get rid of some. You gotta like take out some of the pieces, but you gotta keep some of the good pieces as well. So here's how I'm thinking, right? Ezra Miller needs to go. And from what I've seen in the news, facing up to 26 years in jail, um, it hey, that's half the work done for me. So, uh, so so first things first. Uh, in order for like, as I said, like for DC Thrive, you need to like like pretty much make it so that like some of the good stuff of DC like is still there while also like making sure like you have room for creativity. So first things first, slight reset. And the perfect way to do that is with either a flashpoint, like flashpoint paradox or crisis on infinite earths. Now with that, I lean more towards flashpoint because again, Ezra Miller is the problem is like a super problematic character. Like, Hey, what better way to, uh, to do that than to so I'm out with another flash mid movie <laughs> and and like in that storyline is perfect for resetting because that that started the new 52 so and essentially from there you kind of you kind of have the blueprint for a, a modern take on Marvel with both the new 52 line slash DC rebirth as well as a uh, DC Earth one where in which that's basically the ultimate universe, but with DC universe characters. So you do that and then boom, you say like, Hey, these things still happened. So like, say like these specific movies still happen. So like, for example, say that man of steel still happened. Uh, say that like, uh, Snyder's justice league happened. Wonder woman happened. But you say like all the, all the bad movies, like you, you don't have to say like, hey, those those didn't happen, so you don't have to worry, and start off with a clean slate, and then you just go from there. Like you have, you can have a uh, Henry Cavill come back, you can have a uh, Gal Gadot come back at, in their respective roles, or if you wanna, uh, or if you wanna like do a new generation type of deal. Hey, oh yeah, speaking of new generation, where are the Teen Titans at, fam? You have a whole generation of people who are raised on Teen Titans yet. Uh, the closest thing we got is that Titans uh, TV show. Oh no, nah, I'm gonna need y'all to run run the pockets on that one. But uh, but yeah, I I, I have loads of ideas and um uh, and hey, I know you guys want to hire me, so hey, go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and go ahead. I'll take a pay raise of about uh fifty million dollars. All right, we'll, 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 we're going through some merger issues at the moment, but we'll we'll, we'll have the money. <laughs> By any means necessary. When exactly. You start. If you, I'll start like I'll start yesterday. But uh, again, my fee is fifty million dollars per hour, and I'm gonna need y'all to uh, if y'all have to do do what you have to. I I don't care where you get the money from, as long as I get my money and I can uh I can celebrate DC, or right. can revive it. We got right. you. Pleasure doing business with you. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. So uh, even for me, I, uh, we have a lot of similarities, to be honest with you. But for me, definitely first course of action, PR correction. So uh, Ezra Miller, Amber Heard, you either get written out or you dying off your character. We're not having people think about the mess that Ezra Miller is doing. And then two with Amber Heard, like pooping in people's beds. Like we can't have that in my movies. So I think she's been also- blackballed from Hollywood, actually. I think I saw that on the news. She's like she can't get any work. It is what it is sometimes. Uh, but also for that, we're going to embrace the multiverse. You mentioned Crisis on Infinite Earths, but so here's what we're going to do: Matt Reeves, Robert Pattinson's Batman universe is one universe, yep. and all the characters are specifically to that Batman. There is no crossover whatsoever with any of the other movies. You can use as many Batman villains as you want. It's like there's a lot of spinoffs. Like there's already a penguin spinoff coming. I saw things for like a, even a Dr. Pig and just like other characters like that, that can get a spinoff. Then kind of separating it, the Joker uh, movie, that's one universe. There will be no Batman in the Joker movie. You can get like maybe one of the Robins. You can do a death in the family. There will be no Batman in that movie. Uh, um, then the other one is the DCEU. 
So that's a universe, like the whole Snyderverse and all that, that's another thing tied in together. And if there is an interaction, it's only because of Crisis on Infinite Earths. Also um, with that, I'm also giving James Gunn as many movies and TV shows as he wants to work with. Uh, because like he hasn't missed so far with DC. And since Marvel kind of ruined that relationship with him, I mean, it's a very complicated issue, but I know he's doing like the final uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, but after that, yo, DC exclusive contracts out here. Uh, but that's that's what I would do, so. Yes, 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 good plan, good plan. Also, hey, with that Joker movie, I mean, you can have Jason Todd, Red Hood, I, I mean. Yeah. You can get one Robin. There will be no Batman. We're not hiring another Batman. We're done with Batman for a while. But uh, but yeah, I, I like that plan. It's real solid. All right. Super so Boy Prime, baby. Briefly get into what we want to see next. Okay. So, hey, what's what I want to see next? Again, like more direction. Give me that uh, Shazam and Black Adam crossover. Give me that uh, Superman and the Shazam family uh, crossover. Give me, uh, let's see, what else? What else do, we, do I want to see? Oh, yeah, like that Matt Reeves Batman universe. I want to see that thrive, as well as the Joker universe. I want that to thrive. Uh, and then just just a general slight reset of, D- of DC. It's like, and for Warner Bros. to get their merger, get their act together. <laughs> Simple as that. Yeah, I'm mostly with what, I, what you said. Also, I would love to see a John Stewart Green Lantern, Ooh. not introduced with his own movie, but we use him kind of as a Nick Fury-esque character. So we pop him in into like a few movies, TV shows first, then we get his own movie just so we can hype it up like that. So that's one thing that I would love to see. Uh, yeah, I would, uh, Titans I heard is actually pretty good. Oh yeah, uh, it is. Yeah, I just know there's kind of just like seeing it on the big screen. Be, I really want to see a Robin in a movie in some form, either Robin, Nightwing, Red Hood, in some form. Uh, and yeah, just to get in there act together. So that's that was our deep dive. So we are coming up out of the Task Force X black side and keep catching some air. And transitioning from there, we're gonna get into the Come Get Your Rose segment. So this segment goes to a person that we just really wanted to give love to, give appreciation for, and give credit for just incredible works they do. So for me, I am going to give it to Zack Snyder. Uh, We talked about it earlier. His vision is incredible. And just to talk about how incredible it is, the fact that, you know, just the tragedy that he went through and for him to be taken off the movie, when people were already like kind of off him, like from a studio wise, because just because of the, it's not really a controversy, but just the discussion discourse coming out of Man of Steel, also, just kind of a lot of the backlash coming out of Batman versus Superman. For him to be taken off the Justice League movie and to have a years long campaign that was fan driven, wanting to see it and getting it uh, done, tells you again just the passion of a project to even see it on the screen, how he intended for certain characters to be to them to get their own story, like even The Flash incredible story in that movie cyborg incredible story in that movie and a lot of the characters just done right uh and just even kickstarting with the Snyderverse, getting us into the situation a lot of actors a lot of just storylines birthed from that and given credit in their time but definitely just genius what he did in the direction that he took it so yeah Zack Snyder come get your rose Thank you. Thank you for that. Like you, he most definitely deserved it, especially, especially giving us some greatness, which is the, which is Zack Snyder, Snyder league. <laughs> yes. So wrapping up, we had just an incredible episode. So we're going to get into our recommendations. Oh man. And for my recommendations, obviously, obviously I got to recommend pretty much, you know, the black Adam movie currently in theaters we also I also uh really just hype up like a lot of the DC extended universe movies which include the likes of uh yeah, I said Man of Steel, Snyder's Justice League, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, uh The Suicide Squad as well as oh yeah, Peacemaker and Shazam like 
all of those property oh yeah and titans uh technically that's not dcu same thing with the batman but I, i'll count them anyways and all those doom patrol <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. I forgot about them, but but yeah, all of those properties, right? Like they are, they are great works. Uh, they're great movies, and I and you can like all watch it under the same banner, which is HBO Max. So, so please go ahead and give those a watch, and then obviously, hey, you got your got all the anime we mentioned earlier. So yeah, so yeah. Do you have any? Uh, just I was going to do the same recommendations with DC movies, uh, but even with that um, and the TV shows, the DC animated movies are really incredible. Uh, just like the I know they did the Injustice storyline. They also like Justice League War. There is a, a, a what is it? It's the the Green Lantern. They give the John Stewart movie that's oh, different. Uh, but where my light? Yes. Um, he has his own story. There's also just like uh, Justice League Dark with uh, Constantine. There's like two or three other Suicide Squad animated movies um, in DC. So give those a look too. Really good. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And of course, we have to hit you up with our with our plugs now. And from there, here we go. So we got ourselves our Instagram and our Twitter, which is at Blurred City Twenty Two. Come give us a follow and come give us a and like all of our pics, all of our videos, because that's where you can receive updates. And we have ourselves our Discord, which is also found in the link in our uh in our Instagram, which is a fun community where hey, you get get updates on like many different like our release schedules we also going to start streaming on there especially when the silent hill games drop i know good and well i will uh <laughs> with or without uh my co-host I'll and be, the be hiding underneath a cover playing <laughs> mm-hmm. and then i'll just be out here uh with popcorn in one hand and then the controller in the other i'll i'll be out here here eating and and then we have ourselves our youtube which is blurred city pod and of course that's also compounded with our patreon which is also blur city pod where you can receive donations or you can like uh give money to us monthly where you can receive extra content and extra recorded episodes that we have not uh released to the public well besides on patreon so if you want to hear more of our stuff then hey that's a perfect way to to receive exclusive content on there and then next we have ourselves our our email, which is blurredcity22 at gmail.com. And that is where you can submit like questions for us to answer, like for our like our QA episodes. We also have some it's also where you can submit your come get your roses, your geek out freakouts, your uh and all of, for all your suggestions for like different uh different segments that we have. As well as just hey, some some receive some extra uh incentives from all of us. So that's all I have in terms of our our podcast info. Yeah, for my individual author pages, I have uh from my Instagram, Mitri underscore dash. So M-E-T-R-I underscore D-A-S-H for my Twitter at the Mad Dash 16, T-H-E-M-A-D-A-S-H 16. And if you want to check out my book. Phantom Paintings, and most irregular tale. You can catch that on Amazon. So just housekeeping, moving forward, November is going to be very, very fun. We have a lot of things planned. One thing uh, that we have overlooked in the nerd community, which we apologize for, is gaming. So next week, we are going to get into gaming. We also are going to look at one of the greatest Hulk stories ever told. Also, we're going to have our... Whew, Black Panther Wakanda Forever movie review and then wrap up the month with just uh, Blurred Thanksgiving. So hopefully we have uh, some guests lined up for that as well, but we're going to have some fun. So thank you for rocking with us. So we're going to leave you some words of encouragement. All right. So for my words of encouragement is that like, hey, we always look forward and never look back. Despite the things that you've done in your past, despite all the wrongdoings you may have done, that that's all again in the past. Like it has moved on, and and it's only you that's looking looking backwards, not seeing what lies ahead. 
you forge your own path, you forge your own fate, you forge your own destiny. And that's all I have for you. Yes, we're in the same boat. So whether fate is predetermined or it is comes as you go, your choices and the way you choose to live your life is the pin that tells and writes your story. So you have the option to take control whenever you want to. So just with that, we wrapped up our Black Adam movie review and we'll hit you next week. It's not goodbye forever. It's just goodbye for now. And that's the Blur City Pot. See ya later.